Hello everyone. 360 degree cameras and three dimensional video. Those are the two big things that are that seem to be taking the uh, video world by storm. Uh, three dimensional stuff is the ongoing gimmick and quite frankly uh, I think we should just lose it. For most things it's pointless and we're not actually filming things in proper 3D for most things. Not It's not a camera with two, two lenses with stereo separation being pointed at a scene. Uh, instead it's uh, a two-dimensional uh, scene that's post-processed into layers that are separated. And that, I think, is part of what gives a lot of people headaches when they're looking at uh, these three-dimensional movies. Uh, but also, the other cues that we use for distance, such as um, focal length, are not present in a three-dimensional movie. Uh, all we've got is parallax, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, we don't have the uh, other depth cues. Uh, we also uh, can't shift our focus to something else in the three-dimensional uh, field uh, because uh, these, they're still using the same old tried-and-true uh, two-dimensional um, uh, uh, filmmaking techniques like focus pulls. And, you know, by that I mean uh, you, you get, uh, you start out with one thing sharp in, in the frame, everything else blurry, and then you shift the focus to the thing that you want people to pay attention to and everything else goes blurry. To do three-dimensional properly, we have to have a really good depth of field. You can't have blurry objects anywhere in the field because that will mess with people's brains when they're trying to uh, look at things. And then if they want to look at something other than what the filmmaker wants them to look at, which is likely going to happen in a any kind of a, a, a movie or whatever, having something blurry just makes you try to focus on it harder and that's obviously going to cause eye strain because everything in the three-dimensional projection is the same distance away roughly speaking it's on the screen it's all at the screen distance so you've got a single focal distance yet you've got parallax and i think that's partly that that's the big thing that gives people headaches i know i get headaches from it but well-done three-dimensional stuff doesn't tend to cause too much trouble. If the stuff recedes behind the screen, then it's not generally so bad because you can, you're, you're at the more of a relaxed focal distance where you're relaxing to focus on it, not straining to focus on it. Uh, if, if it's the gimmicky stuff that jumps out to be three inches in front of your face, that's where it really goes wrong. Because I find what happens is it gets this close, and that means my eyes want to cross to look at it. But if they do that, it goes out of focus because it's actually projected 30 or 40 feet away. And obviously, that's going to cause... Uh, some real strain. I think it causes your eyes to vibrate, actually. And it's, uh, you know, it's amusing once or twice. And after that, no, don't, let's not do that. So, but they're still doing the gimmicky 3D and not the proper 3D. Uh, if you treated it like a window into the world and nothing protruded onto the viewer side of the window, I think the three-dimensional experience would be generally better. That said, there's also the fact that some people can't perceive it anyway, and the way we do it doesn't work well for people with these things, you know, eyeglasses. Uh, the three-dimensional glasses are yet another thing on top, and obviously, I can't take my glasses off and watch the movie with just the 3D glasses because I can't see the screen. And if I can't see the movie, there's kind of no point going to it, right? Uh, 
Certainly no point going to it in 3D if I can't see it. Uh, I, I'm not saying that maybe a blind person wouldn't want to go to a movie. Uh, you know, they might want to listen to it. Uh, that's perfectly fine. But there's no point going to a 3D movie and paying a premium if you can't see it. Uh, that's, that's what I, I'm saying there. Now, three-dimensional movies, they're not necessarily a bad idea, and they work reasonably well in the theater once you get past the headache-inducing issues with them. The gimmick that they're working on now is 3D in the home, and uh, pretty much all require some sort of glasses, and it's off, they often have to be active rather than passive for, because the uh, projection technology is different. Like you've got an active screen, and uh, they, what they do is they, the active glasses, they'll rapidly switch the view for each eye. Uh, back and forth. So you, you, you'll you show the uh, video at 120 frames per second, but each eye will get 60 frames per second. Uh, now that's kind of like a stereoscopic interlacing. Now doing that means that each eye only sees what it needs to see, and you know, that's, that's fine, that works. Uh, but you've got these active things that are, they're probably making noise and whatever, and, or you've got filters, uh, more passive filtering, uh, but it's generally not all that pleasant, and you're still gonna need glasses or something to make it work. And for most people in the home, yeah, they don't really want that so much. Uh, it's, it's too much bother. Uh, so I doubt it's really gonna take off as the next big thing, like the science fiction types uh, used to uh, uh, forecast three-dimensional television be in every home and things would be three-dimensional. Well, I really don't think it's going that way. We're going to stick with the two-dimensional stuff we've already got because it actually works really well for most programming. There's a few things that could benefit from the depth uh, uh, cues in uh, three-dimensional stuff, but for the most part, People are used to the 2D thing and it works and it's good enough. So the 3D isn't that much better, really, to be worth the extra hassles and to have extra bits that could break. And that's a key thing in the home. Uh, the extra bits could break and then you can't get a replacement because they don't make your model of TV after six months. It'd be annoying, right? Now, Three-dimensional stuff is takes much less support gear to make it work. Uh, for the most part, you, you know, like in movie theaters, it's just filters and two projectors or something like that, or or what have you, and and uh, polarized glasses. And that works pretty well, and that's essentially the sort of thing that works in the home as well. Now, the other big thing that's just up and coming is 360-degree video. Now, this is independent of the three-dimensional video thing, and as a matter of fact, I don't think you can do 360-degree video properly and also make it three-dimensional. Um, uh, I think, yeah, I really don't think it would work, uh, really, when you get down to it, uh, or at least not without some substantial post-processing and horsepower at the uh, display end. Uh, but maybe it, maybe someone will crack it, and someone's probably working on it, no doubt. And if they crack it, great. Uh, now, 360-degree video, that's basically where you've got a camera on a stick that takes a picture of everything all the way around it, even above and below, and it, you'll usually get the stick it's on as well. And now it's doing this with a sensor that's really no more resolution than the uh, high, your high definition or 4K camera or whatever it, you would normally have. Uh, so what it's doing is it's allocating the uh, the picture uh, elements, the pixels, to a larger area. So you're going to get a lower resolution with the same expense on the uh, sensor hardware. So you're, you tend to get a fuzzier image, and you know it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but you're going to lose a bit of resolution just to get a wider field of view, and that's perfectly reasonable. Now, once you 
you record this with the camera, of course, it has to be post-processed properly, and editing is, of course, an issue. You need software that can handle that if you want to place things in the field of view. And you're going to have to deal with, you know, the uh, d distances and all of that. And, and that's fine. Uh, but it does mean that you can put up a billboard over here and uh, informational text over there and uh, have the... Uh, presenter in the center and people who don't care about the informational stuff can just watch the presenter and otherwise they can shift their view to the uh, text or billboards or whatever they need to see or they want to see and that can work in a lot of cases but I think uh, like 3D I don't think it's it's got a use case that justifies it for everything or even a large percentage of everything in fact I think 3d uh, video has a better use case than 360 degree video for the general case of filmmaking so you know we're not going to be seeing home movies except the gimmicky kind that are using 360 degree uh, cinematography uh, certain uh, immersion type things would certainly benefit from it and uh, don't get me wrong there there are certainly applications where it makes great sense exploration telemetry uh, you know uh, put it uh, put it on top of a police cruiser and f f see everything that's going on around the car uh, you know that kind of thing uh, that it makes perfect sense uh, and I could see it for well, carefully uh, constructed documentaries. Uh, I could see it working well. I could see it working reasonably well for course type material in some circumstances. But for the most part, I think with the 360 degree video, uh, all it does is give the viewer one more thing to play with and not pay attention to the contents of the video. And that's where I think it's probably going to uh, not fail, but not make the inroads that people might want it to or might expect it to. Uh, documentary type stuff, educational stuff, things like that will, for the most part, I think, continue to be uh, single, uh, single direction uh, cameras, uh, single direction videos, and you won't be able to pan and and and, and you know scan it all over the place. Um, and that's just because the point of making most films is focused and you want to maintain that focus so that people you know that your audience is looking at the thing they're supposed to be looking at not the um, uh, not the crew setting up for the next shot behind the camera uh, so it now it's not to say you can't do it well but you need to be really careful uh, framing shots for a 360 degree video is going to be a lot more difficult than framing shots for traditional cinematography, even three-dimensional cinematography. Because framing shots and everything is basically the same with, with, tr with traditional and three-dimensional cinematography. Uh, you point the camera uh, at the thing you want to film and you make sure everything's, are, everything's focused properly and the light's good and everything and you turn the camera on and you get a video, right? Uh, where, whereas with the 360 thing, well, there's a benefit in that if you um, <clears throat> are just a little bit off on your aim, you can still get your information. And it could certainly be great for surveillance cameras and things like that, where you can get a much wider field of view. But I really don't think it, we're going to be uh, seeing uh, 360 degree home movies anytime soon. Um, uh, by home movie, I mean movies you buy and bring home. Uh, I'm sure people are going to be making 360 degree home movies going, ha ah, ha, look at the idiot uh, you know, uh, behind the camera, ha ha ha. You know, that sort of thing. I'm sure that's going to happen. Uh, but I don't think we're going to have movies that you go to the uh, supermarket and buy a, a Blu-ray and put it in your uh, player and then you you wander around uh, moving your uh, your video around to uh, see what's above or below <clears throat> or on the other wall that the characters are looking at. I, I really don't think we're going to be doing that. And so 
360 degree video, great idea. And it certainly has its applications. Uh, and I look forward to the technology developing further. Uh, Three-dimensional video, more applications, and more usable and a little easier to construct for the most part if you use a proper camera. But again, I don't think it's going to take over the world. Uh, and that's, you know, in both cases because there are some limitations. With 3D, it's the actual uh, getting the depth cues, not the fight with the, uh, the other depth cues that we get in our, when we're looking at things. And, uh, you know, making sure that we're producing the stuff properly. Um, with 360 degree, you've got to produce it properly. And on top of that, you need to have something where more than just what's in front of the camera matters. Uh, and for most things, it doesn't. That, that's the point of it. The camera, uh, you know, you're filming a, a news show. Who cares what's behind the camera? The p important part is the news, right? Uh, that, that's my point. If you're, if you're uh, filming a movie, you're telling a story. And you need to keep the audience focused on the story, not looking at the uh, car going by uh, on the street behind everybody. You know, if you're looking into a restaurant, say. So, um, you know, that, that's really what I think. You know, I, I'm not saying that either technology is necessarily bad. And um, I'm certainly not saying that we shouldn't develop it further. And the people working on it, I'm sure, are going to improve it substantially over time. Um one thing I would be actually greatly interested to see is if someone could crack 360 degree, three dimensional video. And, you know, not just recording it, because I think recording it would actually be relatively easy, but actually displaying it without making people sick uh, when they pan. Uh, and I think also would be uh, improve the uh, for three dimensional stuff for sure. We need to improve the depth of field um, without losing resolution substantially. The resolution of things. So uh, hopefully those things can be cracked. Um, there's people working on it, I'm sure. Uh, but even if we do crack those things, I still don't believe that either one is going to take over the world. The plain old two dimensional single direction videos like this one are going to be the norm probably until the end of time or at least until we stop making videos of any kind. Well, there you have it. There's my ramble on that. Um, next time is the, I, I believe this is the 51st one of these. The next one will be the 52nd. That will mean I have been doing this for a whole year. Uh, once a week for a year. So maybe I'll, I'll try and come up with something special for the 53rd one. But it don't hold your breath on that. I, I put about 20 seconds planning into these things before I record them. And so uh, these aren't meant to be highbrow videos. So uh, and maybe if I put more than 20 seconds planning into them. Some of them would turn out better, but there you go. That's my ramble on, uh, you know, uh, video uh, stuff, uh, 3D and 360 degree videos uh, for now. Uh, I may come back to it later, but for now, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.